In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the Valorant Patch Notes 5.1, where we have some crazy changes, including changes to Cypher, Fade, and even Harbor, plus some new additions to the game, and there's a lot we gotta talk about. So we're gonna break it all down. Now, Cypher is receiving quite large buffs, and this is what the developers have to say about it. As the game has evolved, we've seen Cypher's presence and relative impact on the roster fall off. While we attribute part of this to Chamber coming to dominate the Sentinel slot more than we think is healthy, we also found that over time Cypher's tripwire setups have become too predictable and easy to counter, and his ultimate has felt lacking in both restrictions required to pull it off and the reward for doing so. The increase in trapwire distance should open up a lot new potential setups for Cypher and allow him to mix up his play patterns in a way that forces his enemies to slow down and move carefully throughout the map if they want to spot them without being caught. Removing the time restriction on enemy corpses should make his ultimate more accessible than it has been in the past and allow Cypher to feel more agency as he initiates neural theft. While adding a second ping should create a clearer period of time where Cypher is pulling the strings, taking in information on the enemy's initial location and setting up strategic moves based on the pressure of the second. We hope that these updates get Cypher mains out there coming up with new setups for their information webs and that, when paired with upcoming updates to Chamber, help him claim a compelling spot among his peers. Now, they kind of snuck in the fact that they are still going to nerf Chamber at the end of that. We'll hit that at the end, but let's talk about all the changes. So first off, the maximum trapwire length got increased from 1,000 to 1,500, which is just a 50% increase. Neural Theft now reveals enemies two times, and there's a four-second delay between both reveals. And as they said, one will give you more information, and one will allow you to utilize that information and clear space or capitalize on that set of information. On top of that, the time restriction to cast on enemy corpses has been removed completely, which is crazy because you can get a kill early in the round or at some point rotate back and then use your ultimate, which is really, really cool. Maximum cast distance increased from 1200 to 1800. So that's a pretty sizable increase. It's another 50% increase in your cast distance. So it's going to be a lot safer for Cypher to use it and you're gonna be able to use it throughout the entire match and it's way more powerful. So all that combined means Neural Theft is actually really sick. I can imagine a lot of plays being enabled by being able to rotate back, use it, use the first one to know where enemies are, move in position so that the second one either forces the enemies to completely give space or they're vulnerable to the information the second one gives you when you set up in a better position to capitalize on that information with the info from the first. Now on top of that, there's some quality of life changes to both the spy camp and the neural theft, meaning that it's gonna be easier to differentiate when someone is revealed and someone's in front of you which could be a little bit of a problem before where sometimes you got kind of lost because of all of the visual augmentation that is happening around these abilities and ultimates. So now it's just going to be better overall. And then on top of that, Cypher's place utility is no longer destroyed by AOE damage from allies. This is a huge one because this happens way too often. Cypher oftentimes would just get his freaking trips all perfect and like just exactly what you want them and then your Sova would accidentally break them or a raise nade would break them or whatever so yeah that's a really really great thing and uh yeah when you're going up against a cypher keep in mind that even if there was like a raise ult in front of you there could also still be a trap so yeah first let me tell you about this insane tool the overwolf valorant tracker this is an in-game valorant tracker that is going to give you live performance updates while you're playing you're going to be able to look at your player profile find your best and worst maps so that you know exactly what you need to focus on your own personal stats your most played agent that you can use to gather important information about what you need to do and how you can improve from here this is our most exciting sponsor yet because it goes hand in hand with our mission to help you improve and this is perfect for those of you who want to climb so go check it out right now in the download links below next up we do got to talk about fade and they said this quote fades prowlers have been a versatile and difficult to play against ability that we're looking to sharpen with these changes the duration changes encourage fade to be more deliberate in the areas that she chooses to sweep, while the other tweaks to the ability are meant to help enemies on the counterplay side of things. The nightfall cost is increasing in its price, as we found the baseline value of the ultimate to be on the higher end compared to other ultimates in the game. So the Prowler's duration got reduced from 3 to 2.5 seconds, the time the Prowler is alive without a trail, 
The delay on bite after reaching target increased from 0.4 to 0.6 seconds. The hitbox got improved. The near sight duration on hit is reduced from 3.5 to 2.75, and the prowlers now fizzle out, no longer debuff instead of debuffing its targets if they teleport it away before it's finished its animation. So that's a very specific one, mainly for Yoru and Chamber, but mainly Chamber. Like, if a Chamber has an alternate angle with his teleport and the Prowler, like, actually comes after him and he teleports away, he's going to be able to see what right away. So that's like a like a sneaky Chamber buff. It's actually interesting. But uh, overall, these changes combined with the Nightfall cost increase from 7 to 8 mean that Fade is just knocked down a peg. Like, she does everything that she did before, but there's more counterplay to her prowlers. She has to be more intentful with its use. And Fade, who was definitely one of the best characters in the game, is now just slightly reduced in power level. And I do think that these are honestly good changes because it brings her more in line with the other initiators in the game. She's still very, very strong. And I still imagine she's going to be one of the best characters. But if you can do all these things and she stays one of the best characters in the game, then it seems like healthy changes that just affect the power level of the character more than anything. Now, the next character that we got to talk about is actually Harbor. Harbor got some surprise changes here saying, quote, Harbor's abilities all make a healthy round impact, but we saw some players new to Harbor not using their abilities enough and feeling too constrained. We hope these new changes make it easier for players to hit the ground running with Harbor and for skilled Harbor players to achieve more flexibility when controlling the map. Cascade number of purchasable charges goes from one to two. So yeah, it's a pretty decent buff if I'm being honest and it allows you to have faster setups, but uh, it's not going to make the character all of a sudden insane, but it is a nice change for sure. They also added an interesting system update where they're going to have real-time text evaluation. It's going to be only available to NA at the start, but basically what it does is it will auto-mute players who send disruptive text messages in-game, and it will be applied sooner rather than later, and of course they're going to evaluate their systems to evaluate more types of text. So there's going to be like a list of words that if you say them, you're going to get like insta muted. So they're going to evaluate the context and evaluate all the problems after the fact. But in the moment, they are just having the system in place to just kind of swat you down before any reports go through or anything like that. It just does it automatically. Now, of course, I have to circle back to the reference of Chamber nerfs. There have been some theories that Chamber was actually not going to get nerfed and fundamentally changed, mainly because a lot of the perception of the community was that he was fine. But there are still a huge population of players and pros that think that Chamber is very, very strong. And it's really, really split on what to do with him. Some people just want some power level tweaks to the character, just reduce some of the numbers on some of his abilities or make them more expensive or increase the time and other people want complete reworks or fundamental changes to his ability to take multiple angled fights over and over. I'm not entirely sure what direction Riot is going to go. It really depends on whether or not they think that Chamber is healthy for the meta. If they'd say, yeah, he is, then I could imagine just some small quality of life changes like what they're doing to Fade. But if they're saying, hey, we don't really think this character is healthy to be a huge part of the meta, then they're going to hit him with something far more severe. But you tell me, how would you nerf Chamber and why in the comments down below? That's all I got for you today. Thank you and see you next time.